Okay, math to 8.3 notes. We're talking about word problems of independent and dependent events. Now, I think that the word problems are just a little bit easier because the formulas that we had to deal with last time, we don't really have to deal with this time. We can just kind of ration out in our head. Um, so hopefully this makes sense, sense. Number one, you select a card from a standard shuffle deck of 52 cards. You return the card, shuffle, and then select another. Both times, the card is a diamond. Note that 13 of the 23 cards, yeah, note that 13 of the 52 cards are diamonds. So let's read the directions first. Determine whether this scenario involves independent or dependent events, then find the probability. Now, remember, I talked about independent and dependent events. We're talking about um, does the sample space change? Did you change it, right? If we're talking about marbles in a bag, we're talking about did you take the marble and put it in your pocket or did you put the marble back in the bag? So here we're trying to decide, are they independent or dependent? Um, you return the card. That's the key phrase there that tells you that they are independent. Right, because if you were to take that card and then rip it up, and then you were to select another card, they would be dependent because you would have 51 cards in the second deck, right? Or quote unquote, the second deck, the second trial. So we've taken care of that part. Now we need to find the probability. So we're finding the probability that both times the card is a diamond. So the first time, and then we have the second time, and we know we're going to have to multiply them together. So let's start off by seeing it. Um, they're going to be fractions because probability is almost always a fraction. How many cards are diamonds? There are 13 diamonds. So there's 13 um, winning options, you might say. 13 um, good outcomes. We put that in the top. And then there's 52 total. So up top would be total, or on bottom would be total, and the top would be like the number desired. Desired. Um, they are independent events. So the second one will be the exact same as the first. We multiply those together and I get, what is 13? Oops. 13 times 13 is 169. And 52 times 52 is 2704. But I think those will reduce. They do. They reduce down to 1 16th. Well, I guess these are both 1 4th, aren't they? We could have reduced at the beginning. But, oh well, we've already done it. So there we are. That's, that's simple um, probability of a deck of cards. Number two, a bag contains seven red marbles and six blue. Another bag contains six green and six yellow. You randomly pick one marble from each bag. One marble is blue and one marble is yellow. So starting off, we're deciding, is this independent or dependent? Um, you randomly pick one marble from each bag. So it doesn't ma matter what you do with the first marble, you're picking from a different bag. So these are gonna be independent. All right, because so they're completely separate bags. All right, um, so we wanna do blue and yellow. Well, what's the probability that we grab a blue? Um, starting off looking up here, I'm going to read, it, read through it again. Bag contains seven red and six blue. And then another contains six green and six yellow. So starting off with the blue, there are six blue and there are 12 total because six and six gives you 12. We could reduce this to be one half. There are six green and six yellow. So that's going to be six over 12 again for the yellow which is one half. Just because the fractions are the same doesn't mean necessarily that they are independent or dependent. Um, it's just a coincidence that number one and two both had the same fraction.
they could be potentially different fractions and, and still be independent. All right, so we multiply those across and that's one fourth. So the probability is one fourth. All right, moving on to number three. There are five nickels and seven dimes in your pocket. You randomly pick up, pick a coin out of your pocket and place it on the counter. Then you randomly pick another coin. Both coins are nickels. So independent or dependent. The big thing here is that you place it on the counter. You don't put it back in your pocket, you place it on the counter. So these are dependent. You can kind of think about that. You, you take it out of your pocket, you set it on the counter, you've changed your sample size. You've changed the number of coins in your pocket. So we have the first and second fraction. We're going to have to multiply them together. Um, how many coins total do we have? We have five and seven, so that's going to be 12. And then you take one of them out of your pocket and set it on the counter, and then you have 11 for the second trial. So we want nickels. Um, the first time we grab a nickel, there's five of them in your pocket. And then you take that nickel out of your pocket, you set it on the counter, and then how many nickels are in your pocket now? There's going to be four. So now we need to multiply these out. Um, 12 and 4 can reduce to a 3 on the bottom. So this will be 5 over 33. So 5 30 thirds is the probability that you would grab two nickels out of your pocket. All right, number four. There are four nickels, three dimes, and four quarters in your pocket. You randomly pick three coins and place them on a counter. The first coin is a nickel, the second is a dime, and the third is a quarter. So again, we are setting them on the counter, so these are dependent. This time we have three trials, so we're going to need three fractions. How many coins are in our pocket in the beginning? We have four, four, and three, so eight, nine, ten, eleven total. Eleven in the beginning, and then we keep ta taking them out and putting them on the counter, so then we'd have ten, and then we'd have nine. The first coin is a nickel. How many nickels? We have four nickels to, to start off with. The second is a dime. We have three dimes, and then we have four quarters. So we need to multiply those out. Um, I'm going to cancel some stuff. The 3 and the 9 would turn into a 3. The 4 and the 10 would turn into a 5 and a 2. And I think that's all we can do. So this turns into 4 times 2 is going to be 8. 55 times 3. Well, I should do that in my head, but I'm not going to. That's 165. I guess I should put little multiplication symbols there. All right, hopefully that's not too terrible. Moving on. You flip a coin six times. The coin lands heads up the first three times and then tails up the remaining three. Now, is this gonna be independent or dependent? The question here is that, um, are, you, are you changing the trial at all? And the answer is no, so these are independent. Right, the first flip of a coin doesn't change it. So we have six different trials here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first three of them, um, well, we have to get, what do we have to get? Heads up, the first three. So heads is one half chance. So we have one halves. And then for tails, we also have one halves. So multiplying those out, um, to make that easier for my calculator, I'm going to say this is 1 over 2 to the 6th. So I'm just going to type in 2 to the 6th in my calculator. That's 64, so 1 over 64. All right, number 6. A cooler contains 12 bottles of sports drink, 4 lemon-lime, 5 orange, and 3 fruit punch. Three times you randomly grab a bottle, return the bottle to the cooler, and then mix up the bottles. All three times you get a lemon-lime drink. So the big idea here is you randomly grab a bottle and return the bottle to the, the bottle to the cooler. So these are independent. And because all three times we're doing the same thing, 
I could write this just as the probability of lemon lime to the third. Right? Instead of writing it out three times, I could write it out as an exponent there. All right, so there's 12 total bottles. And then how many lemon limes are there? There are four lemon limes. So this is the same thing as one third to the third, which is one over 27. All right, there we are. Number seven. Your sock drawer contains two white socks, six brown, and six black. You randomly pick a sock and get a matching pair of black socks. So this one's kind of harder to see, but these are going to be dependent, right? Because you're not going to put your first sock back. So starting off, how many socks are there? There's two white, six brown, and six black. So that's going to be, is that 14? Yes. 14. And then for the second trial, there will, there will be 13. We start off with six black socks, and then we take one out, and we have five remaining. So I'm just going to type this in my calculator. Um, six times five, ABC, 14 times 13. Oops, I need parentheses. Well, I got a syntax error, so I guess I can't do it all at once. That's supposed to be a 15 there. There we are. All right. Number eight. There are six nickels six times in your pocket. Three times you randomly pick a coin out of your pocket, return it to your pocket, mix up the change in your pocket. The first time the coin is a nickel, the second is a dime, and the third is a nickel. So we have three trials here. These are going to be independent. How many coins total do we have? Well, we have six nickels six times, so that's going to be 12. The first time you pick a nickel, actually these are it's six nickels six times, so these are all going to be sixes. Really this is going to be one half to the third, which is one eighth. Pretty easy. All right, looking at number nine. You flip a coin and then roll a fair six-sided die. The coin lands heads up and the die shows a two. These are going to be independent because regardless of what the coin does, it does not influence the die, right? So we have the coin and then the die. The coin, we've already talked about, coin will always be one half. The die, there are six sides and there's one side that we want. There we are. This whole talking about the die showing a two, it doesn't really matter what number it is, because it's the same probability that it would be a two or a three or a six or a or a one. Now, if it said something about a seven, then you'd get a little bit confused, but I don't think the problems will do that. Okay, number 10. A cooler contains 13 bottles of sports drink, five lemon lime, and eight orange. You randomly grab a bottle and give it to your friend, then you randomly grab a bottle for yourself. You and your friend both get lemon lime. So the big thing here is um, you give it to your friend. So these are dependent. So we have two fractions here because we grabbed two bottles. The first one has 13 options, and the second one would have 12 because you took one away. Originally, we have five lemon lime, and then we have four. So, typing those in, we'd have 20 over a big number, 156, and then we reduce, and we get 5 over 39. Number 11, you roll a fair six-sided die six times. The die shows an even number the first three times and an odd number the remaining three times. Well, 
there are three even numbers and there are three odd numbers. So really these are all going to be the same fraction of what well, we could say 3 over 6 to the 6th or we could say 1 half to the 6th. Whenever I multiply that out, um, I think 2 to the 6th is 64, but I'm going to type that in. Yep, 64. That's that. And I didn't write it, but these are all going to be independent. right? Because rolling the die doesn't influence the next roll. Number 12, last one. You flip a coin and then roll a fair six-sided die. The coin lands heads up, and the die shows an even number. So the coin and the die, these are independent. The coin will be oops, one half. The die will be three sixths. This is really one half times one half, which is one fourth. All right, that's that.